Yo yo, welcome to lesson 18. Today, we are going to talk about while loops, which are very similar to a for loop. But if you're not too careful with this one, you can crash your program very easily. So with a for loop, you basically give it a list of items or provide a range for the loop to iterate through. Instead, with a while loop, you just need to provide a condition. And while that condition is true, it will keep repeating the logic inside the block. Nice. So let's write our first while loop. To use a while loop, all we have to do is type while. And now we have to provide it a condition. So we can just put true as the condition. So let's type true. And then we end it with a colon and then hit enter. So for this loop, let's just make it print hello. So let's type print hello. And now let's click run and let's see what happens. And right now our console is constantly printing hello nonstop. This is also known as an infinite loop, which occurs when a program does not end. As you can see, a while loop is pretty deadly if it's not used correctly. Whereas with the for loop, there is always an ending condition. So to end the program, all you have to do is just click stop at the top. So you're probably wondering why we should use a while loop. Well, this loop is very helpful in scenarios where you don't know ahead of time of how many times you want to repeat some logic. A great example use case for while loops is in video games. For example, the game Tic-Tac-Toe, where you don't know ahead of time of how many moves is required for a user to win. In this case, you will want to keep prompting users to pick a position on a board. So there are two conditions for this while loop to determine whether it should keep prompting the user. One being checking if there is a winner and two being checking if the board is filled. So I do have a video where I cover how to build a tic-tac-toe game in Python. But to keep this video short, I'd recommend that you check it out. Cool, so let's get back on topic. With a while loop, you essentially get more control. In most cases, you would want to have a variable to keep track of your current position. You can increment it by one or two or even decrement by one. So that way you can control whether the loop goes forward, backward, or however you want. So let's rewrite this for loop that prints hello world 10 times with a while loop. So first, let's create a variable to keep track of our index. So index equals zero. Next, type while. And since we want to do this 10 times, our condition will be while index less than 10, where basically once our index is greater than or equal to 10, the loop will end. So end the statement with a colon. And for the body, let's print hello world. Cool, so let's comment this part out and now let's click run. And here we're stuck in an infinite loop again. So let's stop the program. So we forgot to do one thing. The reason for this is because our index is always zero. So that's why our condition will always be true. To fix this, let's increment the index by one. So let's do index plus equals one. So now after we print hello world, the index will increase by one. And after we do this 10 times, our index will be 10, which means that our condition will be false and hence the loop will end. So now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we printed hello world 10 times. Another great use case for a while loop is for removing objects from a list. In most cases, when you're working as a software engineer, you will most likely deal with the list of objects. So let's create a simple object called human that has one property called name. So let's get rid of this line and do class human. And then let's do the init function and the first parameter itself. And let's pass it a name. And now let's do self.name equals name. Cool, so now let's create a list with humans inside it. So let's do humans equals square bracket, and now let's create some humans. So now let's remove each human named Vincent. So we could do this simply by using a for loop. So let's comment this out, and now let's do for human in humans. We can just do if human.name equals equals Vincent, then what we want to do is humans.remove human. And now let's add a print to print out the result. So let's do print humans. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got two humans left where we had four humans in the beginning. So basically two humans with the name Vincent got removed. So now let's try to do this with a while loop. Before that, let me help you visualize this before we jump into code. So here I have the four names, Vincent, Bob, human, and Vincent. And I drew a rectangle to show that it is in a list. Now let's label the indexes. So let's put a zero one, two, and three. And for a while loop, we will need a variable to keep track of our current position. So let's call it index. And let's set this to zero. And let's use this arrow to keep track of our current index. So first we start at index zero. And because the name is Vincent, we can get rid of this Vincent. So for some reason, this drawing tool doesn't let me select the Vincent. So I'm just gonna delete this line. So that way I can click into the box. So we're gonna pop index zero. And now Vincent is gone. And now basically everything gets shifted to the left. So now Bob goes one to the left, human goes one to the left, 
and Vincent goes one to the left. And I want you to notice one thing. Now at index zero is Bob. So basically, we don't need to update the index after we remove an item from the list. And one thing to note is that the length of our list decreased by one. So now we can get rid of this index three. Since Bob is not Vincent, we can increment our index by one. So let's change this to one. And now let's move our arrow by one. Cool. So now our index is one and the word is human. So since human is not Vincent, we can increment our index by one again. So let's increment this to two. And now let's move our arrow to two. And now, as you can see, our name is Vincent. So we can pop index two and now we can remove Vincent. And now the length of our list will decrease by one. And now the total length of our list is just two items. And now that our index is equal to two, we have no more items to loop through and hence the while loop will end. So now let's code this out. So first we'll need a index to keep track of our current position. And for our condition, we just want to ensure that the index is less than the length of the humans list. The reason for this is because the length of the list will decrease by one. So we should just do while index less than len humans. So next what we want to do is we want to get the human. So we can just do human equals humans and then we grab it by the index. And now we just want to check if the human's name is Vincent. So here we do if human.name equals equals Vincent. Instead of removing, we can also use the pop function. So let's do humans.pop and we pass it the index. And this index basically refers to the current human that we're looking at. So after we remove the human from the list, we don't need to increment the index. The reason for this is because all items to the right after this human will be shifted left. So in this case, the only time we want to increment our index is when we see a human that doesn't have the name Vincent. So all we have to do here is add a else statement. And then in the else statement, we just want to do index plus equals one. So that way we increment only when we see a human without the name Vincent. Cool. So now let's try this out. Let's get rid of these two lines and then let's comment this out. And now let's copy this print and put it on line 20. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we went from four humans to two humans only. And if you want to see the names of the humans, so instead of a print, we can just do for human in humans, print human dot name. And now let's run again. And here, as you can see, we see Bob and human and Vincent does not exist. Hopefully that made sense. And in the next lesson, we are going to put all of our learnings together into one small but awesome project. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that way you won't miss out on the next lesson.